put them into their mind and really begin to chew, eat, and digest that. It will, it will make, it will take you into a place of transfiguration. Because what does it say in Romans 12, 1 and 2? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, restoration, restored to a former yet better state of mind. So you can do what? So you can prove now the very good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Because of the day we live in, the seventh day, transfiguration and transformation, same word, metamorpho, is going to happen in the seventh day. And let me tell you something, church. You're a little bit ahead of the curve, but you're fixing to hear a lot of teaching on, in the church on your mind. And it's not going to be map teaching. We've had, the, we've had map teaching. Now, we're talking about arriving at a destination map where we take the map and we do the map and we arrive at a higher destination. I'll tell you something. I've been doing this now for six or seven weeks. Jack, I, I meditated an hour and a half for the services. Man. And it passed like that. <laughs> it changes you. It changes you. I'll tell you something, it'll make you smarter. <laughs> it really will make you smarter. It'll make you, it'll challenge you. It makes you want to do things. It makes you smarter. You begin to see the Word of God at a higher order. And so what we're going to do today, now, you know, I'm going to, it, I look around, I know most every one of you, I know you're born again, so I'm not going to give an altar call for salvation here. But what I want us to do is I want us to take some time and talk about and learn how to meditate. There's lots of different ways you can do it, but you just need to get started doing it. A lot of people say I'm too busy to meditate. I'm going to tell you something. It adds time to your day. Whatever time you spend meditating, you're going to get it back in the day. Things are going to go better. Because why? You've programmed your mind with the thoughts of God. Amen. And it gets into that subconscious part of your mind, that 90-some percent that we never even touch, and we begin to access it. When you begin to think, about God's word, things happen. How many, how many, how many of you meditate on God's word consistently? How many of you know what happens when you meditate on God's word? Amen. Yeah. He starts with his scripture. Amen. All of us scriptures from all over the life Bible come together. Yes, sir. Right? John Piper, this guy I used, I was, I was, I was interested to find out. He started uh, meditating some 30 years ago. He said he got stuck in his Christian walk. He's a pastor. Pastor is a very large church, by the way. Uh, and he was stuck in, a, in an area of his Christian wall. And he said he had never heard about meditation, but he began to read and study meditation. So he decided he was going to take one year and meditate upon why he was stuck. And what's happened since then, he said, every year of my life, I take one thought, one topic, one subject, and I meditate on it for a whole year. He says, what's happened in 30 years, I've written 50 books. And every bit of it's come out of that meditation time. It changed it. It changed it. So, let's uh, let me give you another scripture. Romans 8, 18 through 19. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. How many of you, when you read that, you think you're talking about when we get to heaven? It ain't talking about heaven. It's talking about right now. This whole creation is groaning right now for the revelation, for the revealing. And if you look at that word sons, it is we us. It is fully mature sons. It is fully mature sons. See, we've got to change the way we think in the church. You cannot require babes to be we us. God doesn't require we, uh, He don't even consider them sons at that point. They're His children, yes. They're going to, if they die, they'll go to heaven. But they're not considered sons. It says in uh, John 1.12, it said, To those who believe on His name gave He the power to become the sons of God. Amen. 
There's a becoming of the Son of God. You know, when you become a technon, once you get through the weos stage and the pion stage, and you get to the technon stage, then you can start beginning to do some stuff. But when you really get supposed to act like God, do what God does, and do the works that Jesus did, that's when we become weos. The whole earth is waiting for the revelation of the weos to appear. How's it going to happen? I believe it's going to happen because the church is going to get hold of meditation. And what is, let me tell you something. If a son of Satan can take and meditate, on stuff that's irrelevant and yet see an improvement in his life and in his bank account and in his bottom line and the way he treats his family, how much more <laughs> can the church of Jesus Christ do? Meditating the higher thoughts of the Almighty God. I'm telling you, the church is fixing to go past the world. We're supposed to we, we have been so far behind them that man, God is coming and the church is going to pass them and we're going to be the leaders and the shakers again. Hallelujah. But it's going to happen because people are going to have to learn to meditate the Word of God. Yes, Let me tell you something. You, if, you, if you just sit and watch television 24-7, your mind is turning to mush. Yeah. Can I just throw some things out there? They found out that you know what you know what will keep you from getting, learn, getting Alzheimer's? <laughs> My mom died of Alzheimer's. But let me tell you something. I hate Alzheimer's. I pray every day God let me put my hands on an Alzheimer's patient and give them their mind back. That means hope. I want that. You know what I'm saying? I want that. When you write complex sentences, they found people who write complex sentences. What's a complex sentence? Well thought out sentence that write. Very, 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 very seldom they develop Alzheimer's. Why? Because this connect, this 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 touch, whole brain learning is affecting this neurology in your mind. It's causing you to form uh, diatribes. It's, it's patterns of thought that thicken and they grow and they expand. We, we, all we talk about is the devil's side of that, which is a stronghold that gets in people's mind. But this is God getting, taking your mind over. You know, so don't waste your time. Learn to meditate. Learn to meditate God's Word. Now, Wade gives a thing, and I think it's very good. But let's, let's see if we can add to that today. Read, write, sing, say, pray. Okay. Visualize. Okay, and visualize what I add. Now, I want you to get to work when you meditate. God gave this in meditation, by the way. God said, tell them to use their rocks when they meditate. Tell them to ask me questions when they meditate. Tell them not only to think about my worth, but to ask me questions. And he said, I'll give them answers. I said, tell them to use the rock as they're talking to me. And tell them to, to use it. Why? Why does God want you to use a rock? There's nothing magical about this rock. But you touching the rock is magical. Why? This is fire causing neurons to fire this side of my brain. It's called whole, again, whole brain learning. I get my whole thing there. Be sensitive when you're meditating and you're alone in your quiet time to smell. Tell them why, Wade. Tell them why you tell them why they should be sensitive to their sense of smell. You ever smell the Lord? The Lord has a smell, a sweet perfume. The rose of Sharon. You can tell when he comes close, you'll smell that fragrance the Lord. And different smells uh, represent different things in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever smelled a smell that caused you to think thoughts? Andy? Amen. We, we experienced it in our other churches one day. Right. Sure have. Sure have. Brother Charles had a spot when he lived in, what was the name of that place down there? I never can remember. Potash. Potash. Potash, Alabama. He had a place he could go and he would walk with the Lord. He said, God got him up and, and uh, one time and said, walk with me. And he said, I got up every day uh, in the morning early. And I walked with God till it got dark. He said, I went home, I went to sleep. Got up the next one Sunday. He said, I did this for three or four days. He said, I never ate or drank water. Didn't even know I had to until the end of that time. But he took me to that place down there uh, where he would meet with God. And before he took me there, you know, he took his children. And he just says, uh, the driveway had grown up. It was behind an old school that had been abandoned. And uh, he pulled up there and rolled down the windows. And he said, Father, he, he just, you know how he is, he gets real emotional. He began to cry. He said, Father, please, sir, just let my children 
experienced what I experienced. And he said in that, in that moment, that man was filled with the most amazing aroma, the sweetest smell. And Brother Charles said it was that way every time I came. He would come. He said it was the smell of the show. Now as you're meditating, use every one of your senses as best you can. You know, begin to listen. He'll speak. He'll speak. Remember, you're actually going up there. Begin to visualize. I, I visualize myself sitting, sitting up there where God says I sit. If He says I sit there, I sit there. So I begin to visualize it. I begin to make it as real as I possibly can. And I begin, I've even looked over and seen the, the nail hole. I didn't see a scar, so I saw But that in my mind, I realize it's just, you know, what's in my mind. But it's very real. And I talk with Him. And I meditate. And He gives me scriptures. But He's teaching me. I mean, I'm just in the early stages of this, I promise you. But He's teaching me. And He's, and he's been, the last few weeks He's been speaking to me. He said, I want you to use every sense when, you, when you're with me. Smell. You know? You had an experience. Why do you share about the taste? Still got the mic. Share about the taste. I was soaking in the spirit one day. Um, soaking in meditation is similar. Um, and I was caught up into the third heaven, I believe. This has been a while, a while back in the other church. And uh, I was caught up in heaven and I was caught into a vision of me sitting at a table. Uh, and Jesus was on the other side. And I was on this side of the long table. And in the middle there was honey and there was bread. And Jesus came up and got a piece of bread and dipped it in honey and put it in my mouth. And I could taste the honey. And in Scripture, honey represents a revelation. And God was telling me in His way that revelation is coming. Continue to seek me and meditate and soak in the presence of God. And uh, that I can taste the honey in my mouth. Amen. And God wants us to have these experiences. Amen. Experiences. Why do you, I, I just want you to understand. Physiologically, you're, the organ that you call the brain is changing when you meditate. That's not the mind. But that is the organ of the brain. It's called, it, it is changing. And it is changing for the better. Last week, and I'm not going to go back to it. A lot of y'all were out. I, I may do it uh, of the Wednesday night. I think the last Wednesday night I was teaching. Make them go back to it. But I talked about uh, bumping up against your thresholds. Y'all remember that? Entropy. You know, it's a physics term. You know, it's displaced energy. About bumping up. When you meditate, you bring yourselves to your thresholds very, very quick. When you meditate, you're going to notice things about you that's not going to always be good. There's going to be things that bother you. You know, the, 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 the sin. You're going to... Uh, how many of you are easily upset by what other people do? Can I tell you something? With all love, all the love that's in my heart, it ain't them, baby. It's you. It's not them. It's you. The problem is inside you. Why do you react to everything that happens? You know, I, I, I've been, I remember when I was younger in the Lord, I mean, people would just look at me wrong and I'd be mad all day. And they probably didn't even see me. They probably wouldn't even look at me. Somebody could say the least little thing and it would just throw me a loop for days. Why? Because I had a very low threshold. But as I've grown in the Lord, my threshold's got hard to where you know you're not going to throw me up, throw me off by looking at me funny. Or this or that. I've heard some people get mad because you don't like their comments on Facebook. <laughs> I don't understand that. I, look here. If somebody tells me their parents died, I'm not going to like it. I know this. They, they tell me you're just saying, showing that you noticed it. But if somebody died, I'm not going to like it. I'm sorry. And can I tell you something for the 50th time? Please understand, if you're trying to get information out, Facebook is not the way to do it anymore. Because everybody on your timeline does not see your post. They changed the algorithm. Only about a third of what you put on there, or only about a third of the people on your timeline see it. If you're putting something on there you want to be seen, you better put it on there four or five times in a day if you want your whole timeline to see that. Because they're not going to see it. 
So don't get upset if people don't see your post or good response. They probably did not see it. It's very possible. And even if they do, sometimes how many busy during the day and you see a post and you just read it and then you move on. Okay? But aside from all that, what I want you to understand, that's the threshold. When things like that upset you, you've hit a threshold. The good news is you hit your threshold and you break it through into a whole new dimension of the glory of God. You. you can move past that. And guess what? That stuff won't bother you anymore. It just won't bother you. You will hold, it'll just fall away. That's what meditation does. Why are some of you stuck? You're not growing. The same things that bothered you 10 years ago still bother you today. Because what we've been taught is how to deal with stress. How to dispense that stress. Well, that's great. We need we don't stress the killer, but there's a better way. Meditate. That dispenses the stress, stress, but it keeps you moving forward in God to where those things don't upset you and things don't bother you and you actually grow into a mature human being. See, all of us have been born, all of us have been hurt, all of us have experienced tragedies in life and they affect people different ways. Post-traumatic stress disorder that happens to our soldiers is they get into situations and they see certain things that human beings should never have to see and experience. Police officers go through it. Have all your, your, your transponders, just people that are involved with life issues that a lot of us don't ever have to see have a tendency maybe to, to experience this. Not all of them do. But what happens is that threshold gets lowered and things begin to bother them that used to not bother them. A lot of people in their childhood, guess what? They got that post-traumatic stress disorder just because of the way they were raised. They were raised in terrible conditions. And they get out in the real world, and all this stuff is compressed out here in this pre-conscious part of our mind. We never deal with it. And all at once, we're getting mad at everybody in church. And you got Christians at church hop from church to church because they didn't say so-and-so about did this or so-and-so did that. And they gossip and talk about everybody in the church and never deal with who they are, never break through the threshold into the glory realm they belong in because they're stuck. And guess what most of us ministers do? We minister to you at your threshold because we think that's a bad thing. we got to rescue you from growing in Christ Jesus. No. Grow up. Hit your threshold. You and the Lord in your time of meditation break through it. Stuff's going to come up. As you meditate deeply, stuff inside of you is going to rise to the top. It's like fasting, anger, all this stuff. And when you see it, don't, don't think it's somebody else. Realize it's you. It's you. How many of you ever got mad at somebody and then you actually talk to them, which is what you're supposed to do, not call Aunt Susie about it, and get Aunt Susie to talk to them. No, you have a problem with somebody you don't talk to. Sick of this baby Christianity. Come on. You know, there's a time for milk, but get off of it. Get off of it. Grow. Become a wee ox. Go to that place where you grow in Christ Jesus and you begin to communicate. How many of you ever got upset with somebody and when you went and talked to them, you found out that it didn't even have nothing to do with you. Amen. I remember being upset with a brother one time and I went and talked to him and he said, you got upset because I said that. Brother Lee, I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to that guy over there. It had nothing to do with you. But in my mind, he had said that I meant. And I was just all been out of shape, upset, angry. It didn't even have nothing to do with me. It did, but it was on the inside of me. It didn't have nothing to do with him. I'm telling you, if you look, even if they're wrong, if you learn how to deal with you, it won't bother you anymore. How many of you want to quit getting thrown for a loop and being mad for two or three days? And upset with people. You know, you want to just live your life in peace. Learn to meditate. All right. So, Kim, can I get you to come play some song? Now, I know, again, I did not try to offend you about your music. But when you meditate, remember, you're not there to worship. Meditation and worship are two different things. Not telling you not to worship God. Worship is vitally important. And there will be a part maybe in the meditation where you can worship God. But you're not there to worship Him. You're there to communicate with Him. You're there to talk to Him and Him talk to you. You're there to have Him do it. Some work inside of you. 
Okay? So that's why, so when you get music, get music that helps you focus, but doesn't cause you to start worshiping. Are y'all getting offended at me? I know we got a house full of worshipers. I'm not trying, I'm telling you not to worship. Okay? I'm not telling you not to worship. I'm saying find something that doesn't cause you to go into worship. Call something that helps you focus. Listen, find you some music or something that helps you focus. Okay? And stay conscious. Right. right now, I just want you to let's begin to meditate. We're going to take one scripture and we're going to meditate together. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do. Now what I would do is I meditate. I'm going to have a little rock in my hands. And I would say something like this. The works. And I will stop right there. And I will think about the works. And in my mind, I'm going to visualize Jesus, the works that He did. What works did He do? Think about all the stuff Jesus did. He healed blind. Then we stop and we think about how did He do that? What, what did He do when He healed blind? Okay? He walked on the water. The works. I begin to think about the works. I begin to ask Jesus questions like, Jesus, what's it like to walk on the water? Why did you do that? You ever ask Jesus, why, why did you do that? <laughs> he didn't have to. Jesus, how did you walk through the midst of people about to stone you and then not see you? Jesus, what happened when they took you to the edge of the hill in Nazareth and they were about to throw you off? You let them take you all the way to the brink and then you just turned around and walked right through their midst. Why did you do that? Jesus will answer. Just like it took me a little while to figure out why my daddy brushed his teeth. Jesus will answer. Come on, you meditate. You see in some of the works of Jesus. Now what you do is you begin to visualize you doing some of those works. See, a while ago when I talked about the Alzheimer's patients, I, I visualized myself. I visualized somebody like my sweet mom being brought to me one day and them asking me to pray and my hands going on and her personality. See, I saw, I saw what it did to my mom. It took her personality. It took her smile. And to see that come back, I visualized that. See, I got the rock. I'm feeling that. How many of you know, Brother Andy, you meditate? You, you, go, you go as long as you want to with this, can't you? It just gets deeper and deeper. And you get into a deeper and deeper state. Now what's happening with your physiology right now is your brain, because you've got your eyes closed, you're going out of a beta, a beta range into an alpha range. That's called super learning state. As you, The deeper you go in this, you'll get into theta and delta. You may almost nod out a time or two as you do it. You may even fall asleep. Guess what? It's, it's okay because even in that moment, the Holy Spirit and your spirit are working together. And when you come out, you go right back into it. It just gets deeper and deeper. And what's happening is, man, there's all sorts of things going on in that physiology of your brain. And sometimes you're going to come to the threshold. Sometimes you're going to feel things inside your own body. You're going to begin to get stressed out. You're going to get upset with somebody. And that, in that moment, understand the Lord's just bringing that to your attention to show you son, daughter, we're going to let this go right now. And right in that moment of meditation, it can fall away from you. And you can overcome that. You can overcome it. Now, some things may take you more than one time. Some things may take a few weeks. But understand, you're breaking through into another dimension in Jesus Christ as you focus. Now, remember what we said. Use every part of your being. Listen with your, even listen with your physical ears because sometimes you may hear something there. Smell, breathe. Sense the shepherd. Father, Father, as we sit quietly in your presence right now, Father, we come with a simple request. Teach us how to meditate. Teach us, Father God, the way that's best for each and every individual. Each individual may be a little different. But Lord, we want to walk, we want to think the thoughts of God. <laughs> we want to think like you think, Father. And we want all the marvelous benefits that come from that. Father God, you told Joshua, 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may do according to all that is written. For then thou shalt be prosperous, and you shall have good success. Lord, we want to prosper, and we want to have good success, because we spent time speaking, muttering your word. One of the things you do is that it's all important. You speak the word of God. You talk out loud. You can mutter to yourself. Your works. The works. The works that Jesus did. And guess what happens? As you speak it, your ear hears it. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You're hearing. And guess what? You're going to hear more than just yourself speak because the Holy Spirit is going to speak back. You're going to begin to hear. God's going to begin to speak to you. Every part of your being. Sometimes you're praying. Another thing you can do that will help you to quiet your mind. How many of you, when you meditate, you have trouble getting your mind to be quiet? To get to a place where, you know, your thoughts aren't running around. Praying in the Holy Ghost will help you there. When you come into that place, you try to meditate. Just begin to softly pray in the Holy Ghost. So that up to at least something like that. After a few minutes of praying in the Spirit, your mind will begin to quiet. Close your eyes when you pray in the Spirit. Your mind will get to that quiet place. And it will help you to meditate. When you find yourself, if you're sitting there, your mind wants to get agitated and start running, just quietly pray in the Spirit again. Then go back to muttering that Word of God. Say it very slowly, very slowly to yourself. Think it deep. Guess what? When you say your, your works, God's going to take you and give you a whole other scripture. You're going to remember, you're going to begin to think about that. God will connect the whole Bible for you. You can learn more in 30 minutes of meditating than me preaching to you for hours. I promise you. This is how you grow. This is how you grow. Amen. I need to do to help other 